Hi, I'm Conrad Colby and this is my masterclass on street photography. So why I shoot a lot of street photography and love to always return back to it is because I shoot a lot of architecture and I'm shooting interiors and I have to shoot a certain way. It's always got to be really bright, punchy imagery because it's got to stand out online. And when I get back to street photography, I feel like I'm suddenly <laughs> free to do what I want. I can, I can take a picture of a building like that or, you know, I can get crazy with the angles. I can get crazy with the liking, lighting. I can make that dark Gotham City style looking, ominous looking building in front of me look really cool, you know? That's a great reason to get out there and do it, is to free yourself from maybe the constraints that you're having to do for your professional work. One of my top tips is if you want to take it to the next level, shoot with a model. Get a model involved, just make sure you keep your poses natural and keep the moments candid. Make sure you give the model some kind of thing to put in their mind that's, that anchors them to a thought in their heads. Okay, so equipment. When we're shooting street photography, we want to be light and nimble. You don't want to be carrying loads of gear. Me personally, um, sometimes I will take my zooms, but most of the time I'm using primes. Um, I find them less intrusive, they don't attract as much attention from people, so I can be sneakier with my shots and get more candid moments. Because they are a set frame, it actually gets me to think in frames when I'm looking around at what I've got to shoot. So I know which lens I'm going to pull out because I'm thinking that's a 35, that's an 85, that's a whatever it is. Next tip is lighting. You can use all sorts of lights. You can use natural light, obviously. You've got artificial lighting, fairy lights, a torch, anything you can use, backlighting a subject, uh, creating reflections. If you don't have water on the street, bring some water along. Create something in your scene that makes it unique. Next tip is permits. So you're shooting in an area, you obviously if you're shooting someone on the street and you've, you're intending to use that image for commercial use, making money out of it, you're gonna need a talent release form. So it's great to have those on hand. You can now obviously download uh, forms online really easily. There's also some great apps that you can download for talent release forms, which is very simple and you hand your phone to someone and they can give you their signature straight away. If you've got, you're obviously doing a bigger shoot with clients and all of the, the pizzazz and you're in a council space, you're gonna need a council permit. So make sure you've got all those things in order before you get to your shoot. Timing is what I really think is the most important thing obviously with street photography and the way I try and find the right moment with uh, particularly if I'm following a person or I see an interesting character that I want to capture um, and I want to get that candid moment I will kind of I'll watch what they're doing from a distance and then I'll, I'll start getting closer to them and I'll obviously keep my camera I shoot from the hip a lot of the time and I'll keep my camera down and I will be actually watching the background most of the time and I I make a point of not actually keeping my eyes on the person I'm following. So I'll be looking this way and that way and I'll be keeping my camera down low. And right when I see that timing where it's lining up with that building that I'm using the leading line or something's coming across, I'll take the shot. How do we get our candid moments? What I like to do, this is how I do it, is I'll stand by the side of the road at a traffic light and I'll actually kind of do a performance. So I'll pretend I'm waiting for the bus or my mate's late to pick me up and I'll even check my phone and pretend I'm text messaging. So I make people feel like I'm meant to be there standing there like a widow on the side of the road forever. The traffic lights are actually great because people stop and people are always in a strange headspace in front of traffic lights I find and you get these great expressions on people's faces and usually um, if you can get some backlight coming across you'll get some nice shadows coming across the ground. Looks excellent. My next tip is always thinking about your tone and texture. What colours are around you, what colours are complementing the scene, uh, thinking about your, your lights and your shadows, um, and also using textures around you. So if there's glass, you've got reflections, if there's uh, water available to you, you can even bring some water like, like we did in the shoot we did. Different ways to, to look at the scene. Um, I remember one great shot I took was at a beach, I was at a restaurant, and there was a big plate of glass in front of the scene in front of me and I got this great reflection of palm trees behind me and the guy on the beach in the front and it just made an awesome scene. So it's stuff like that that you find that's just available to you really. Um, so keep hunting for those things. Next tip is editing. When you're editing your images, obviously for street photography, it needs to look natural, don't over process them. Um, and also I, what I like to do is keep a folder of my images. So the, the best ones that I think where I, I really worked, something really worked, I'll keep in the good pile and obviously the ones that didn't, I'll keep in the bad pile and I'll keep referring to why they, they didn't work and what worked about the ones that did work. And if I start to see a series develop, well hey, I've, I've got something for maybe an exhibition or something to sell online. 
Okay, so you want to make some money out of your street photography. Well, it isn't the easiest area, but it can lead to it. So if you find you're getting quite a good thematic theme going on in some of the series of images that you really like, you can obviously approach a gallery or try to sell your work online. If you're working with a model and you're getting really great stuff working with talent, you obviously will lead into maybe fashion photography for streetwear, that sort of thing. It can lead to other stuff like shooting cars, shooting uh, scooters, shooting shoes. Who knows? Anything that's got an urban background, obviously all these skills are going to feed into it. So my final tip is, you're the professional, you know all the rules, now it's time to throw them out the window. Get experimental, get those weird old dusty lenses out of the bag that you've never used before that have the strange crack across the front. Put crystals in front of your lens, get a sheet of glass and shoot the reflection. Zoom while you're taking that shot with your, with your zoom lens. Use whatever you can find around you to create something unique about your photograph. Um, I often shoot into, um, <laughs> one of my favourites is actually shooting revolving doors. I'll stand right next to a revolving door and, and get people coming in and out of it and I'll get that reflection in the background. There's something weird and interesting about those things. But find different stuff like that. Um, if you chuck some water on the ground, you can put a flash on it, get a nice bouncing reflection like we did tonight. One of the things I really love is actually slow shutter speed. I use it quite a lot. Um, I tend to set my camera on about 1 over 30. That's, I usually find a good shutter speed. And I'll, I will physically shake my camera. So I will, and I'll even take it sometimes down to a second. So I'll need a pretty strong ND filter on there if I'm going to create some nice um, soft background as well. But uh, I get some great painterly effects out of that and I think it's a really effective thing, especially when you're following a crowd of people. You can get these beautiful shapes with a bit of buildings in the background. It looks amazing. Sometimes I go out in the rain and I take my underwater housing and I get some great stuff. Just think outside the box, keep experimenting. Make sure to like and subscribe this video. I'm Conrad Colby. Thanks for watching.